Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We are getting back into the New Testament. We have only two more lessons to go uh, before we finish out uh, the second half of the Bible. Um, so today we're going to be looking at the uh, basically a majority of the uh, New Testament, which is the epistles or the letters. Uh, so let's first take a look at our discussion questions for the week. Uh, like always, there is a link in the description of the video below. Uh, taking you to the Google form where you can fill out the answers to these questions. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and do that. And they should be correct this week. Um, I know there were uh, some problems with the previous questions, but they should be good uh, for this week. But anyway, to the questions. First one, have you ever received a handwritten letter in the mail before? And if so, who was it from? And do you remember what it was about? Uh, if not, what would your reaction be if you did receive a handwritten letter in the mail? And who do you think it'd be from, and what would it be about? So I'm thinking of more, more than something, more than like a birthday card or something like that, an actual letter in the mail, okay? Uh, question number two, uh, ask your parents, your families, uh, if they have ever received handwritten letters in the mail, and what can they remember about who it was from and what it was about? Um, do they wish uh, people would do this more, or are they glad that communication is mostly done through emails, text messaging, and now emojis? Uh, question number three, uh, if you really want to encourage someone who is feeling down and out, how would you go about doing it, and what would you be trying to say? Number four, what do you think it means to live like Jesus, and what would that life look like? Uh, would you be happy living totally like Jesus? And then the last question, uh, ask your parents, your families to answer the same question. What do you think it means to live like Jesus? What would that life look like, and would you be happy living totally like Jesus? So like I said, we're getting into the uh, letters portion of the New Testament, and so we're going to focus today on this short passage from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. And this is what uh, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Philippi. It says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, looking not to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, in being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, that is what Paul says to uh, the Philippians. And so, these letters are written in the very early days of the church. So remember we talked last time about the book of Acts and how the book of Acts really journeys through the formation of Christianity and the Christian church uh, and how it started to spread into so many different places. <clears throat> and so the letters are our ways of being able to see uh, what was being told to these churches, how they were being encouraged um, along the way or rebuked in some cases. Um, and so the main reason I think that Christianity grew like it did back then was because all they had to talk about was Jesus. Uh, it doesn't even seem possible that just one subject, one person could create such a large movement of people, but it did. Um, nowadays, when it comes to being Christian, we have so many different kinds of churches, right? We have so many different marketing schemes around to draw us in, and they're often contradictory, trying to play and to, to reach out to a certain type of person. Um, one kind of church will beckon you to their church by saying, well, they're loving, they're pro-choice, and they support same-sex marriage. Um, another 
might beckon you by saying that they are loving, pro-life, and against same-sex marriage. Almost the same thing, but exact opposite. One would be founded in the traditions of their past, while another will embrace more modern uh, flavors. One will confess faith in Jesus alone, and will give, uh, and will say that, um, and another will say that all religions ultimately lead to God. So, being a Christian today appears much more difficult than it was in those first days of Christianity. Uh, one of the biggest assumptions that can be made. Uh, is that the Christian church is slowing in growth because uh, people believe Christians are hypocrites. You know that word, hypocrite? Um, how can Christianity be all over the board on so many various topics? Um, like if you want a laid-back church, you go to this place. If you want an uptight church, you go to that place. Uh, people can think uh, Christianity is just a scam to get your money. Uh, and that it will do anything to market to your values so that you will be there and so that you will give money. But the thing about Christianity is that it's not really about your values. It's not about my values. It's about God's values. And so now this story from Philippians that Paul wrote, uh, it encourages us to be like Jesus. Uh, not that Jesus should be like us. Uh, God doesn't need to change for us. We need to change for him. Our life's purpose is to live like Jesus and to embrace godly values and principles. Uh, we could go so far as to say that life is about being holy more than it is about being happy. And if we say this, it makes the purpose of life seem rather pointless. I mean, why would you want to be holy and not happy? Exactly. However, you can be happy by being holy. Uh, in addition to that, being holy is a great test of self-control. Uh, it's easy to go out in the world and find something to make you happy. Think about all those things that uh, you are interested in, or you see adults are interested in, or that you know people really just flock after. All these things that we go after to make us happy. Would those things necessarily make us happy? holy? Not always, no. Um, there are many ways to be holy and happy, and while those things that uh, we tend to, to seek after or uh, enjoy, um, things that may not exactly be good for us, we know that God uh, intends these things maybe for a purpose, uh, but maybe not in the ways that we use them. Now in this uh, Philippians story, Paul is encouraging us to, like I say, live like Jesus, uh, to have the same mindset as him. Jesus, he doesn't become a very popular person in a way. I mean, okay, yes, like all of us today, we know about Jesus. Um, churches around the world talk about Jesus, but I, I don't mean popular that way. He didn't become popular like in the, in the popular crowd. Um, he became a servant. Uh, he was an honest, hard-working person, and his obedience to God might have gotten him killed. And it did. But of course we know it was for the best. Uh, and there are stories uh, all over the world of people who lived for Jesus and died as a result of that choice. Um, and they would find their reward not in this world, but uh, very much so in heaven uh, for what they did and how they lived. And so now am I uh, asking you that we need to go out and die for Jesus? Well, not exactly. Um, but I hope that you would consider what it means to live like Jesus. I want you to go out and live like Jesus, live for Jesus. Um, and so these epistle letters, epistle just means letter, um, like this one to the Philippians, it's centered around living a life in Jesus. Um, some letters, like Philippians, are very encouraging. Uh, they're encouraging good faith and behavior that is already taking place in those, in those areas. Um, but others, maybe say like the book of Galatians, um, that's Paul's way of correcting bad faith and behavior. Uh, but both, both of those books, even though they're written in two different ways, are both loving examples of instructing others to live life for Jesus. Uh, he's the only one uh, that takes away the sin of the world. Um, and these letters help us to 
uh, to really see what life in Jesus is all about. So, all right, so let's look at some important things to see. Uh, like I said here, uh, epistle means letter, um, and the epistles um, are all these books written here, um, books 6 through 26 in the New Testament. So starting with Romans, uh, going all the way down through Thessalonians and Philemon and Hebrews, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, all the way to Jude. Uh, there's one book left, and we'll talk about that uh, next week, but these are all uh, the letters of the uh, New Testament. Each of them uh, written uh, with a specific intent in mind, uh, but all of them centered around what it's like to live life uh, in Jesus. So let's take a look at again our questions for the week. So we're speaking of letters. Have you ever received a handwritten letter in the mail before? If so, who is it from? And what do you remember about it being about? And if not, what would your reaction be if you got a handwritten letter in the mail? Who do you think it would be from, and what would it be about? And like I said, I'm talking more than like birthday or Christmas cards or holiday things like that, but an actual letter on paper, handwritten. Um, then question number two for your parents and families. Um, if they've ever received a handwritten letter, what can they remember about it and who it was from? Uh, do they wish people would do this more, or are they glad that communication is mostly done now through emails, text messages, and emojis? Number three, if you really want to encourage someone who's feeling down and out, uh, how would you go about doing it, and what would you be trying to say? The reason I'm asking that question is because, yeah, there are some letters in the New Testament uh, in which the writer is trying to encourage someone or a church that is feeling down and out. It was real difficult to be Christians back then. Um, and so if we want to really encourage somebody, uh, what would we say? What would we go about doing? Um, and we might be able to see that there's some connection between what we would do and how the letters of the Bible were written, too. And then number four, what do you think it means to live like Jesus? I didn't talk too specifically about that because I want you to think about that on your own. What would that life look like? And would you be happy totally living like Jesus? And then last question, have your parents and families answer that same question. What do you think it means to live like Jesus? What would that life look like? And would you be happy living totally like him. All right. So that's it uh, for this week. Uh, New Testament number four. We got one week left. Uh, we'll be going through the book of Revelation. Uh, not Revelations, as I've heard it said before, but Revelation. Mm -hmm. And that's a, very, that's a very strange book in and of itself. So we'll find out a little bit about uh, what that book is. But before we go, I'll close this in prayer. Uh, you can answer your questions for the week, and then I will see you on Thursday night. Uh, for our Zoom. So let's pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the good news of Jesus spread so quickly uh, because people spoke of him. How simple it appears to grow our church today, to simply talk about Jesus. As you strengthen us uh, each and every day, mold us into the followers that you wish us to be, and help us to set aside all of our selfish ambitions and to cling to and profess faith in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, have a great week. Enjoy answering those questions, and I will see you all on Thursday for our Zoom. All right, bye for now.